Hey, it's Matt. I've got a 7x10 inch transparent watercolor of a white-breasted nuthatch and a downy woodpecker to show you today. Got a photo reference for these guys right out the kitchen window on a winter's day. They weren't both in the same photograph, but they were both on the same log, so I ended up kind of compositing the two into one painting. I thought it'd be kind of fun. I started by frisketing off the birds and then putting a lot of water on the page so I could do a nice, soft, wet-on-wet -wet water. I did this with some blues and a little bit of purple, and later I charged in some reds for the berries of the viburnum bush that was behind these guys. And all this was done on the wet of the page, so it would really smooth these out. Years ago, I used to rely on an airbrush to do a lot of this, and I abandoned the airbrush a while back because I really preferred the look of watercolor and kind of the quality of the watercolor washes over there. Hairbrush for me was a bit of a crutch. And I used a bunch of different reds for some of the red areas. I brought in a lot of oranges to really make them a little bit more fiery and vibrant. And so you can see me bringing in some of those oranges and cadmium red mediums. And later I brought in some uh, lizard and crimson for kind of the more cool areas of, the, uh, of those berries. And I also went in and brought in some little suggestions of branches and things in the background. And ideally, if I have this nice smoky um, atmospheric background, I, if I put some of these mid-distance mid things that are a little blurry, it'll give it a nice sense of depth, showing it kind of receding into the background. Again, on this side, I pre-wet the left side of the page and started bringing in some suggestions of branches. And some of that went in a little darker than I initially wanted, so I kind of just hit that with a couple of layers of water to kind of soften those out. And uh, then eventually brought in some more uh, reds in that corner so I could uh, have a little bit more of suggestion of those red bushes in the background. Once I was happy with the background, I went about peeling off the frisket and revealing the white of the page. A great trick I learned in art school was to save the detail of your painting and don't do all of your sketch at first, but to trace that onto tracing paper and then flip it over and then you can transfer your sketch onto your watercolor paper just by rubbing on the back of the page and that transfers your graphite. Huge advantage. This allows you to not be erasing and drawing on your watercolor paper, getting it dirty and scuffed up. And this keeps you really detailed and you have a great detailed um, set of lines to go by when you start painting your uh, actual painting. And by the time it's done, the great thing is that you pretty much can't see any of that graphite that's transferred. Most of it becomes invisible by the time you paint around it. Great, great trick. One of the things that, about this painting that was uh, kind of different is that compositionally having pairs of birds or pairs of anything um, is kind of, I wouldn't say, a, it, yeah, I would say, it is a design no-no. You don't want to have just two centers of interest in a painting and often with birds you'll have a you know a male and a female bird or in this case I have two birds and I it, it, what this could be a deadly thing that it, you just have you looking at the two objects and it's it would be bad design um, what I try to do when I'm doing something like that is have other elements on the page that then make it not just two things really it'll have three four or five things going on so in this case we do have the two birds but we've got all these berries and we've got the log and then the shadows kind of become part of the uh, interest of the page and the way some of the bark peels up becomes other elements that it isn't just two 
thing painting, that it really is all these other elements kind of working your eye around the page. And uh, even the, you know, suggestions of these reds and background elements like the berries that are all blurred out, those also play into your design and kind of help move your eye around the page and keep it from being a boring painting, ideally. And you can see my photo reference um, kind of off to the side of the painting and on top. And the the actual log that these guys were sitting on was really kind of just a, a tanny kind of brown log. And I ended up in, in working on this painting, I pushed that much more in a gray, blue, purpley kind of um, mode. And my thought behind that was that um, I'm basically reducing my palette and that that often helps a painting look a little more cohesive. Um, so I'm using some of those shadows of the purples and blues that are in the bird and the sky and on the reflections of their belly and things like that. And then the warmth of these berries then contrast that a little bit better. So I do have some warms in my log, but I'm kind of controlling where those are and making it ideally a little bit more interesting because I'm kind of trying to work more with the color harmonies on the page. can see a little bit that I'd wash in onto the bark some some stripes of those warm reds and things and those those colors then kind of help tie your eye in so there are the berries at the you know kind of at the top of the uh, log and then I have some of those reds brought down to the bottom of the uh, log as well and uh, so there you're kind of connecting certain areas just by the colors and how you how and where you place them on the page they're not really in the log. Um, my log was kind of a photo reference, very tan, and so I ended up not looking a lot at the photo reference for the the basics of the log, and I just kind of invented my colors based on what I needed them to do to make it a stronger painting. I hope. It's funny, we'll often get the uh, the downy woodpeckers and the nut hatches, and they're both coming in for suet. On, and I have these logs drilled out on the backside of these is a lot of suet, so you'll get the downy woodpeckers <laughs> and the nut hatches coming in to eat the suet. And oh, the fighting and posturing that goes on between the two of them is, or, or chickadees, you know, they just, there's a lot of little battles that go on over the food. And it's fun to watch the nut hatches because they are so, they're small, but they put up such a big fuss for the, the other birds. And they puff up and they spread their wings out and they rock their head back and forth like a snake or something. And terribly entertaining. So I used a lot of different brushes on this. Like early on, to do the background washes, I was using a one-inch flat for most of the things. And then I, to do the little details, I'd bring in like a number four or number six round to kind of drop in the reds. Later in the painting, I'm using usually a number two um, round brush to do a lot of the main washes. And then eventually I'll take out little 10-odd brushes to pick away at little details. I find you don't need 8 million brushes to do watercolor. You can really get away with just a handful of uh, brushes if you have good ones.
So really late in the game, I was mostly just kind of trying to unify things with little dark flecks of color and, you know, finish off those final details. So it was uh, all finished. So there you go. A 7x10 inch transparent watercolor of a white-breasted nuthatch and a downy woodpecker. Hope you liked it. If you get a chance, have a peek at the blog or leave a comment.